Welcome back everybody. My name is Hamza Far, and today, this week, we are in Texas. I'm gonna show you guys the behind the scenes of what it looks like to furnish six apartments and a few houses. This week specifically, the team is almost done building out these apartments. The houses are already finished, already booked, and already live. The apartments are almost finished, so I'm gonna show you guys exactly what the progress is, what it looks like, and break down the unit economics on this deal, just like I've done before. All right, so as you guys can see, these are all B-class apartments. And to be honest, probably B+. Everything is already on the countertops. Everything's already here. Uh, majority of the furniture is already built. The only thing that has to happen now to the majority of these apartments, the cleaners have to come inside and actually set them all up. And as you guys can see, in these specific bedrooms, everything's already set up. You just have to make the beds, and that's pretty much it. Just like this room here. Organize the pillows, make the beds, uh, put up the shower curtains. And now when the cleaners get here, they're actually gonna be unboxing everything, putting everything in the cabinets, organizing the kitchen, making sure everything needs to go where it has to go. That way the units are perfectly done, staged, set up, and ready. Now I'm gonna show you guys the other apartments in the complex and show you exactly the progress on what we've done so far. All right, so in this unit here, we're pretty much almost done. Uh, as you guys can see, the progress is moving along. Uh, I'll come show you the back over here. Pretty much the same thing. Just the pictures have to be put up, beds have to be made, and the units are pretty much done. There's not really much left to do. In terms of space, there wasn't really enough room for a second love seat, so I opted in just to get an accent chair instead. It's a lot smaller and it actually fits the space perfectly. Now in this unit, there's still a lot of work to be done. Hopefully these guys finish today. We started about four days ago. It's about six units. So uh, goal is to basically finish about a unit, unit and a half per day. And as you guys can see, there's still a lot of work to be done in this one. So the main things that will honestly take the most amount of time for these guys is mounting the TV stands and mounting the TVs. Besides that, everything else is pretty much the same. It's not really gonna change, to be honest. Speed is very, very important in Azure Furnishing Apartments at scale. Your burn every single day can go from 200 all the way to $500 per day. The units aren't ready, labor, burning costs of opportunity of it being booked. There's so many things in play that you're burning money every single day if you don't get these units furnished as quick as possible make sure you hire as many people as possible. That way you can reduce your daily burn and make sure you're not burning three to $500 per day and get these units booked and rented out as quick as possible. Now in this unit, there's literally no power right now. So before we even started, I actually forgot to tell the team to put the electricity in our name. So currently we have people working right now without any power in the unit whatsoever. So we can only work during the daytime in this one unit until the power gets back on tomorrow. Now, as you guys can see, all of my bedrooms in every single unit are the exact same. The nightstands, the lamps, the bed frames, everything is the exact same because one, it makes building everything a lot quicker, a lot faster. Once your furniture builder has built one nightstand four times, the next 20 nightstands are gonna be a lot quicker. Plus, if you have to ever cancel on a guest for any reason whatsoever, and you can change them from one unit to the next, you're not gonna complain to Airbnb that the unit is a lot different. It's pretty much the exact same apartment, the exact same unit. Now for these six apartments, they're two bedroom apartments, rents ranging anywhere from $1,550 to $1,650. I spent a total of $6,000 per unit and that includes labor. So I spent a total of $36,000 to get all these apartments furnished. My average net profit per unit is gonna be anywhere from $1,400 to $1,700 in total net profit per unit. So just these six apartments alone will generate in total net free cash flow every single month over $10,000. When I negotiated the lease, I got one month free upfront in rent concessions. My security deposit, I negotiated all the way down to $250. So that means I will get all my money back within the first 60 days. And that way my cash on cash return and the time to get that cash on cash back is a lot sooner and a lot quicker. Now I'm gonna show you guys the houses that I just furnished. I'm gonna go take a look and I'll break down the unit economics of these big giant houses. So as you guys know, I have about right now 60 total apartments in the state of Texas. So the story of how I expanded to Texas is actually pretty interesting. When Philadelphia went on lockdown and I was at 10 apartments at that time, nobody was traveling to Philly. The only places open and the only places that had travel during COVID was Texas and Florida. So I decided I need to hedge my risk some way, somehow. So what I decided to do was expand to either Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, or I was gonna expand to Florida. As I started my cold calling journey in January, I landed upon a six unit deal in Dallas. And when I flew down there, I talked to the landlord and I explained everything to him. He was really cool and really on board. I negotiated uh, four months free on that deal because at that time as well, vacancy was pretty high in Dallas. 
So I wanted four months free, but didn't give it to me. Instead, I negotiated a net effective of what four months free would have been on the entire deal. So the owner was asking for $1,000 a month in rent for six apartments. After four months free, the net effective became $800 a month. So I negotiated the rent all the way down to $800 a month for six apartments. And those apartments to this day I still have make on average $2,000 to $2,400 a month. So the profit margin is huge on those six apartments. Now to furnish them, keep in mind, I had no friends there, I had no workers, I had no connections, I had nobody. It was just me and Salma. And all we had at that time was just the weekends to work on the business because I still had my nine to five job in Philly. So I told Salma after we signed all the deals and we signed all the paperwork, I need you to basically live here for the next month and oversee everything. Project management, accepting deliveries, hiring a cleaning team, uh, helping with organizing the furniture and telling everyone what to do. I need you to basically live here for the next 30 days and I will come and visit you every single weekend and make sure you know progress is moving along. Because once we had everything settled down and set up in Dallas, then after that, we didn't really have to be there anymore. Because as you know, once everything's set up, the systems are created, your automations are in place, you don't actually have to live in that city anymore. So every single weekend for that entire month of January and a little bit of February, I would come back every single weekend, fly back and forth, see my wife, make sure everything is going along correctly, fly back on Sunday, be at work Monday morning, and then keep doing that for an entire four weeks straight. And props to my wife, honestly. She was living in Dallas by herself, no friends, no nothing. We didn't have a car, to be honest with you, because obviously I couldn't afford renting a car just for her by herself. So she'd walk to Target every single day, uh, and she'd just, you know, eat whatever she can, and just, you know, live by herself for an entire week, and just work on the business, and just grind by herself for an entire month. So I really respected that, and honestly, without her, I could not have expanded to Texas, or in general, I couldn't have really expanded anywhere because I was working a full-time job at this point. So after that first month and a half, after we got everything furnished, everything settled, we pretty much were good to go. We didn't have to be in Dallas anymore and we went back to Philadelphia. And as you guys know the story, from those first six units, now I'm about about 50 units total in Texas between Dallas and Austin. And I am still continuing to expand in Texas, but where in Texas I'm expanding to has been changing over the last few months as market demands and patterns are changing and where people are traveling and how large of a group they're traveling with, I'm also adjusting the type of units that I'm picking up and the exact areas that I'm picking them up in. Now, as you guys know, I am myself moving to Dallas uh, in about two to three weeks at the time I'm posting this video. By February 1st, I should be moved back into Dallas. The only reason why we moved back to uh, Windsor in the first place, because we were living in Dallas for about six months, then we moved back to Windsor, we moved back for some family reasons. Now that everything's all good, we're gonna move back to Dallas officially, and I swear to God, I'm not moving anymore for at least the next three years. I've been moving around way too much, back and forth, and it's been honestly a headache. I need to sit down somewhere for at least the next three years and just focus and grind and just work all day long. So yesterday we were in Dallas and I was touring a bunch of penthouses in downtown and figuring out where we wanna live. Originally, my budget was around $5,000 a month in rent, but after I saw this one apartment, and I'm gonna show you guys later, it was so beautiful. Uh, the rent they were asking was about $12,000 a month. Now I offered the apartment building $10,000 a month and that was my offer, so we'll see if they take it or not. But if all goes well, I'll be moving into a brand new penthouse sometime next month in downtown Dallas. I'll show you guys exactly what that's gonna look like. And I think mentally myself, my perception of working on the business and just motivating myself is gonna change living in that penthouse. So that's something really cool that I'm really looking forward to. And honestly, I'm not looking to change anymore. I wanna just settle down here and at least for the next three years, just stay in one place, don't move anywhere. I'm gonna ship my Lamborghini over from Windsor all the way to Dallas. My new Urus that I'm gonna be getting, I'm gonna be getting it in Dallas. So I'll have my, all my supercars basically shipped and imported into Texas. I honestly thought about buying a house myself, but I realized there's no point in me buying a house because one, I don't have any kids right now. I don't have four or five kids. I'm not worried about school locations. I just wanna live a nice penthouse lifestyle, at least until that happens, maybe for the next year or whatnot. So we'll see honestly where life takes me. But at least for the next three years, I'm not moving anymore. I'm done, I'm just sitting down one place and just working. So as you guys know, I mainly only specialize in apartments, but now I've switched it up. I've decided I'm gonna do houses, apartments, townhomes, luxury, I'm doing everything now. This is actually my first batch of houses that I'm gonna show you. These just went live, we just furnished them, and actually the first one already got booked for $200 a night for the next week. I'll show you guys exactly what these units look like. All right, so these houses, the average rent on these is about 3,000 anywhere to 3,500 a month. Now, the cost to furnish these houses is all three bedrooms, three bathrooms, labor, furniture, staging, photography, and all the other miscellaneous things cost me a total of $9,000 to $10,000 per house. 
as you guys can see, I like to keep it really minimalistic. I didn't want to go overboard. I wanted to make sure it had a nice, clean, minimalistic touch, look, and feel to all these houses. Now, with the rent being anywhere from $3,000, $3,500 a month, the total revenue each of these houses are going to generate is anywhere from $5,000 all the way to $8,000 during the highest peak season of the entire year. As you guys can see, the bedrooms look the exact same. The same bed frame, same nightstand, same lamps, same everything. I did add a 4K monitor to all these houses because I want a higher clientele and I want to be able to charge a higher premium price. There's a few extra things you can do to attract that clientele. Now we're gonna go up here. I'm gonna show you guys the bedrooms, exactly what the bedrooms look like. And like I said, it's all pretty much the exact same. Nothing really changed. Here's bedroom number one, exact bed frame, exact nightstand, table lamp, everything. And always for photos, you wanna add a couple of nice little things on the bed, such as accent pillows, towels folded up like that, and little blankets to make that bedroom picture really pop out and stand. Just like with this bedroom here, exact same thing that's done, a couple accent pillows, towels, Lamps are turned on, especially in the bathrooms. If you want to come take a look, I like to have all my stuff done just like this. That way, in pictures and photography, it looks a lot nicer. There's a total of four houses. I spent almost $40,000 furnishing and getting these houses ready. Just in the next 90 days, I'm probably going to make all my money back because March, April, May is pretty peak for this area. In March alone, I'll make about 10,000. April and May, probably anywhere six to eight. So the cash and cash return and getting my money back in this deal is actually a lot quicker. Because as you guys know, one house is equal to three apartments, sometimes four apartments. You make a lot more money on houses, but scaling up houses is a lot harder. It's easy for me to find one landlord with 10 vacant apartments. It's hard for me to find one landlord with 10 vacant houses. So for me to find four vacant houses was actually pretty hard. It wasn't easy. But if you do find them, I recommend taking them. Because literally these four houses is the equivalent of of 16 apartments by themselves. So now I am expanding into houses, luxury houses, townhomes, everything. I'm doing everything now because I want to diversify and put myself in every single basket possible to make as much money as possible. Now, in every house or apartment, you want to dedicate at least one closet to your supplies. So you can see having paper towels, toilet paper, sponges, soap, shampoo, conditioner, everything you basically need, they're all disposables. I don't actually lock it in my closets. It's not a big deal, to be honest, if guests are using more than they're supposed to. At the end of the day, they're paying a premium price. You can afford to have them use extra paper towels or extra toilet paper. It's not a big deal. Just leave it open and unlock. As you guys have seen me scale this business from one apartment to 10, to 20, then 50, and 75, 100, 200. Now you're gonna watch me scale all the way to 500 in the next 12 to 16 months. The way I've been doing it, honestly, there's three main components to it, okay? The sales process is not hard. One is you have to be very, 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 very good at sales. One of the most important aspects and keys in life that I've attributed my success to is being very, very good at sales. Having the ability to have somebody agree to your terms, having somebody do something in your favor while at the same time being of some value to them is a very important skill in life. And that skill alone can make you millions of dollars. So if you can master sales and you can master the art of persuasion, mastering the art of the negotiation, you are already halfway there. Majority of people can't even get through the front door because they don't know how to talk, they don't know how to walk, they don't know how to dress, they don't know how to present themselves in a professional environment. If you can do that, you're halfway there. Now, the next part is understanding the sales process and the sales cycles of acquiring rental arbitrage leases, understanding the difference between rental management companies, landlords, building owners, if it's owner occupied, if it's third party like Graystar, there's so many things in play that you have to understand how to cycle through, get to the right person, talk to the right person in charge to push your agenda through. That way you can get your leases signed, you can operate your Airbnbs, and there's no problems in your contract. So those are actually very important. And I only learned those through trial and error, trial and error, knocking on doors, asking questions, talking to people, networking. Very, very important you do these things, that way you can get what you want. Now, the second thing is, as I'm expanding the business, growing your operational team. Because I can only add on so many units for the current team to handle, right? There's too much volume happening at once. Too much guest communication, guest issues, maintenance issues. So as the units are being added onto the portfolio, I have to make sure I'm adding on an operational team to support it. So that means hiring more VAs, more handymen, more cleaners, more cleaning teams, more VA supervisors. There's so many things that have to be accounted for as you're going to business. So because my margins are really high, and when I first started this business, it was almost at 45%. It has now dropped all the way down to 30 to 35%. Some months I'll still hit 40, 45% net margins, 
but annually start the year, I'll still hit 30% margins. The reason why it's gone down is because I've had to hire more. As you're hiring more supervisors, as you're hiring more VAs, your overall margins go down. Now, the way I basically counter that is as I'm growing the business, I can buy things at a larger scale. My economies of scale go higher. My cleaners are a lot cheaper because now I'm hiring full-time cleaners at $14 an hour rather than paying per unit. So as your business grows, you are going to lose margin in some aspects, but you can also increase your margin because you have more buying power, you have more volume of work, and you can decrease your labor costs in that sense as well. So no matter what you do, your margin is very important and try to get into a deal where you already have 40, 45% margins. And as you scale the business, it'll eventually go down to 30%. Now, I'm not complaining at 30%. If you're 200 apartments, you're making, let's say, eight to $10 million a year, you're pocketing 30% of that. If you're pocketing three to $4 million in your pocket net after everything, it's not a bad business, right? Especially if I'm only working an hour a day, realistically, on the entire business. And the third most important thing when running this business is understanding revenue management and pricing strategy. That concept alone took me a long time to actually thoroughly, deeply understand how Price Labs works, how I should price my listings for the high season, how I should price it for the low season, to making sure I'm maximizing my occupancy while I'm maximizing my revenue. I'm finding that equilibrium between what's the maximum amount that I can charge per night while maintaining the most highest occupancy possible. So it's actually very important to learn that because without that, you're pretty much leaving a lot of money off the table. Last high season, I didn't even utilize it properly and I made a lot of money and I think I still could have made more. But this high season, already I'm planning on what my prices are gonna be, what my occupancy rates are gonna be, and I know exactly how much money I could be making, potentially based on market demands. So make sure you understand price labs, revenue management, pricing strategy, ref par, ADR. There's a lot of terms you need to understand and a lot of these things come from hotel management. So if you're a hotel manager and you're a revenue manager for hotels, there's a lot of books, YouTube videos, and other free content you can digest to understand the concepts and understand the terminology. Now, once those three things are pretty much all said and done for, you have pretty much learned everything you need to know about a seven-figure Airbnb business. If you guys want, you can follow me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I'm always posting the daily behind the life scenes of a seven-figure Airbnb entrepreneur. I have a free ebook in the link below. I have a free course in the link below. And I want you guys to absorb as much of my free content as possible because when I started, that's all I had. Trial and error, and now I've learned everything, documented it, and made an entire series for all of you to watch and learn from mistakes and build a real seven-figure Airbnb business.